We're here at Thailand's best flower horn breeder. This farm is exclusive. So normally this is a secret, you don't get to see this. This is where Mr. Long keeps all his rarest and best compa flower horn fish. Hey guys, my name's George. Welcome back to Coral Fish Astrology. In tonight's video, we're supposedly meeting a guy named TC and a guy named David to show us the top flower horn breeders in all of Thailand. We just got dropped off here, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. I'm here with cameraman Asher, and we're pretty much just waiting for these guys to show up. It's a little bit sketch. Like, we're not entirely convinced that this is gonna pan out. What does any of this mean, Asher? Come on. Yeah, I'm digging Channel down. your inner tie, dude. What does any of this mean? Oh, 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 it's this way, bro. <laughs> We're but Square up, homie. Can we use the Google app to try to translate some of this? Dude, there's no service. We're in like the middle of nowhere. It's not gonna work. They were supposed to meet us here like 15 minutes ago. We need to leave. Bro, give him five more minutes. I think that's them right there. Hey, what's up, guys? Dude, you, you guys were scaring me. I thought you, we weren't gonna show up. Oh, we, so this is TC right here, and this is David. Yep. They're both originally from California, yeah. and I met these guys at the market yesterday. You My name's TC. TC. Yeah. And they told me that they would bring me to Thailand's best flower horn breeders. This farm is owned by Mr. Long Kampa. Right? So we got Mr. Long, yep. and we got Mr. PA. Yes. So these guys basically are like godfathers these of are flower horn breeding. Yeah. And we're gonna check out their farms right now. This one. This one. A little dark in here. So this is VIP service you're getting after hour because they don't open at night for people. You guys are getting exclusive treatment. This is where Mr. Long keeps all his rarest and best compa flower horn fish. Oh. Mr. Long. So I have a bunch of questions right off the bat. The first is, these are all confas, right? These are confas. Okay, it's a type of flower horn called a confa. It's the most expensive type of fish. The hardest to breed and the most colorful. Yeah. Do they only breed confas? Here at this farm, is only confas. Here they focus on mainly competition grade, high-end confas. Mr. Long, how long have you been breeding flower horn? 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. How did you get started? I think he started off with flower horn at first, in the early, the beginning of the hobby. Mm -hmm. He fell in love with it. He just loved the beauty of the fish that he just kept developing it. So Mr. Long is really famous for breeding the all-black confas, but yes. because they're so awesome, they sell out right away. So he really doesn't have too many of them right now. They don't come to the States. Why is that? He can't produce enough black confas to support the demand. Not the best example of one. But that's a but mostly a black, black confa, yeah. yeah. This one is probably the nicest one here. It's definitely $1,000. So is $1,000 considered US. really expensive for a flower horn? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. Up there, yeah. What's the most expensive flower horn he's ever sold, if that's okay to ask? $10,000 is the most. Ten thousand U.S. dollars is the yeah. most expensive flower horn. Yeah. People spend ten thousand dollars on a flower horn. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so basically the confas aren't like the rest of the flower horns. They don't have the really big heads. Instead, they focus on making the coloration really, really vibrant. You see all that metallic blue that yeah. runs all over the body of the fish? That's what's called pearls. When it covers the full head or it covers the face of the fish, it's very high grade. As long as you've got the full marking from the tail all the way to the gill. You got the head covering the pearl, sides of the cheek covering and the face covering, a rectangular body and perfect finish. You got a masterpiece flower horn. If you take this to uh, Aquashella, this is your champion fish. Really? Yeah. I thought I was gonna compete in the Aquashella flower horn contest this year. I feel like I need one like this so I can win it. This one is snake pearling. Snake pearl, so it's a thinner, a thinner line. And this one, the white pearling is thicker, and they call that worm pearling. No two compa comes out identically. You only get a 10 or 15 percent high quality, and then the rest. Are are basically called out. All right, on to the next place. So what we just saw were basically all of the teenage flower horns. Flower horns that were pretty much ready to be sold to customers. Moving on to this room. So for each stage of the flower horn breeding process, they keep them in a different room. In here, he's keeping his smaller flower horns. These ones, they're still grooming. Grooming means that they're developing them to have better coloration, better personalities, just to be overall better and healthier fish. For those of you that don't know, the flower horn fish is very well known for being one of the most aggressive fish you can keep in this hobby. I thought that was always like a negative trait though. No. You're saying that's a positive trait, that they're, positive trait that they're breeding them to have. That's correct. So they're using the mirrors to make the flower horns think that there's another other fish inside yeah. to want to fight itself. When it flares up, it colors up. 
and the more angry it gets, the bigger the head gets. It's a part of the, what do you call it, the forming stage. Really, you're supposed to keep those in for three to six hours, and then you remove them so the fish can rest and relax. And the light, you turn on for 12 hours a day. Why is that? It helps with the coloration. Every flower horn in here is training hard to be the next grand champion. They all want the throne. What's up, dude? Yeah, man, you're just not cutting it. Like, you're gonna have to be way more aggressive if you want a chance to be grand champ. <laughs> Show no weakness. We gotta toughen these guys up if they wanna make it in this flower horn world. Listen up, flower horns. None of y'all in here are cutting it right now, okay? I want the meanest, baddest flower horn in here. What do you even bench, bro? Those are rookie numbers. What about you, guy? You think you're hot stuff? Uh-huh. Well, you think you're ever gonna breathe with that stripe? You need to look at yourself in the mirror a little bit more. Yeah? What about you? Are you talking sh Yeah, you're never gonna breathe with that stripe. You gotta work harder. You gotta want it more than you wanna breathe. George Boot Camp Military Auto. Kind of going in reverse order here. And here, this is where they keep all of their little baby flower horns. If you guys are wondering how baby flower horns are made, this is how they're made. So this is where the selection goes. All the fries grow up here, and then they get handpicked to go into those rooms. So this is where they all start. Yes. Because this is like a really high-end cream of the crop breeder, they just take all the other basic ones. They sell them at other farms. These are all the females right here. And the reason that they're in these separate little containers is because they pull them out of the breeding process because you can only breed them three times before they need a break, before they need like one cycle to rest. And they breed more of these crazy rare kampha. Yeah, there's many tactics that they use to breed aggressive pairs. I know you guys may hate this in the States, but they'll clip the teeth. So when they bite each other, it doesn't hurt. Or they'll remove part of the jaw to help lower the damage of another fish. These guys here, they don't clip the teeth, but a lot of farmers and breeders yeah. in Thailand you see will. Yeah. Thailand's brutal. Thailand is brutal. I can already see the flood of comments of yep. people who are gonna say, oh, it's so wrong. And it's not that I agree with what they're doing, not in any case whatsoever. Yeah. But I think that it's really important when you're watching this that you have to have some perspective of we're in the middle of yeah. Thailand. These flower horn breeders are pretty much doing whatever it takes to yeah. create in their mind the best fish, exactly. the best line of flower horn that will make them money so they can support and feed their families. I can understand why they do it. Yeah. It's yeah. brutal. So this is really cool. Mr. Long has just invited us into his home to see his rarest and best breeding pairs. This is an exclusive thing. Normally he wouldn't show people, he wouldn't show customers these breeding pairs, but we're about to go check out his best flower horns. You're the first to actually see breeding pairs on social media or YouTube from Thai farms. Normally this is a secret, you don't get to see this. These are all baby compas. Whoa, look at them. They have like no color. Guys, these, these are the fry. They're almost like unrecognizable. They almost don't even look like they should be flower horns. This is one month, one month old baby flower horns, two months old. The oldest flower horns that they have in here are three months. Whoa! <laughs> that has got to be one of the biggest c**ks I've ever seen. <laughs> What's the cage for? It's a, a newly brought in pair. Whenever you remove two, they forget each other. So you, when you introduce them, they will fight automatically. So you use the cage for like a month to get to know each other. And then once the two drops and she lays the egg, slowly remove the cage. And they're okay. These fish could never breed like this in the wild. It is a very, very man-made fish. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Here you see one of the traditional style flower horns with a really big snow globe looking head breeding with a kamfa. Why is that? Can you mix these, these two? Yeah, you're creating kamfa malau. The flower horn in the back is mm -hmm. kamalau, red kamalau. That just means red flower horn with a lot of pearl. The female is a kamfa, so together they make kamfa malau. This one is so beautiful. To me, that's like a perfect flower horn. You see how you got the big head? She will attack his head really quick. Mm -hmm. His head slows him down. So he'll, she'll put a hole in his head. If you bond them slower until they actually learn to love each other, not too much damage to the middle. 
Love yeah. Island. It's an interesting game to play, <laughs> man. That's a Kampfa, right? They're both Kampfa. Yeah, and he's so big. It's very rare for a male Kampfa to be able to breed, and it makes this fish very valuable. What, what do you mean? Well, let's say 95% of male Kampfa are infertile. Yeah. So 4% so of the male Kampfas yeah. are fertile. Yeah, so if one can breed, it becomes a very expensive fish. So this is what they look like when they fight. And if that cage wasn't there, they would tear each other off. Yeah. How much are some of these breeding pairs worth? They don't sell them. They will just not sell them. The fry that you saw downstairs? Yeah. Thousands. So selling this fish for even like $2,500 doesn't amount to the money that they make. They're, They're priceless. priceless. Yeah. So how do you tell the difference between the male and the female? Well, the heads will protrude out faster. So the, the male's heads are bigger? Yes. Upstairs, he's got a female with a big, big cock. They're called cocks. But YouTube, don't strike me. This is family-friendly content. Their flower-horned heads are called cocks. What are you gonna do? Just get over it. There's another four? Yeah. It just keeps going. This is like a Empire State Building. We're going to the final top floor. There's a whole other thing of tanks up here. God, that baby's kind of big. He's a shower, not a grower. Whoa! <laughs> Which is your favorite pair? Do you have one that you like the most? Upstairs, another? <laughs> Upstairs? Dude. All right, we're going up to the fifth floor. I'm forgetting now how many floors are there. Dude, how many flower horns do you have? You're, you've got a problem. So this is the second day that it's been fertilized. By the third, it starts straight to the egg. Fourth day, you got little whippers. That's the money. It's the white gold. That's literally like when they bring the bill at the restaurant. That's the caviar. So you can see me before you saw the cages were stood up straight to protect the female and the male from each other. Now they bonded. They don't need the cage anymore. They went through couples therapy and they are... They're staying together. Look at them. Yeah, they're together. Guys, look, I can see from your plate here that you, you haven't had kids yet. I'm going to give you a fair one. I, I don't recommend. Like, think about it. Do you guys want to go on vacations? Thailand is beautiful. What are you going to do? Are you going to get a babysitter? Nah, man. She dropped eggs so she's protecting her eggs. She wants to keep it away from the male. That's why there's still a cage here. So she's still stressed that the male's trying to get and eat the eggs. So This pair has actually had the eggs and now the female is dark with flower horns dark means stressed out the female is stressed out because she's worried that the male is going to try to break the cage and, and eat the babies you're being a good mom oh it's the same thing here this female is really stressed out don't eat her babies he wants to breathe though you can his tube is dropped so he is wanting to breathe that's his p guys sorry just it's just english yeah yeah this man's a stud he's ready to go it's what did you just pull him out is he okay so they can pull him out for a few seconds whoa <laughs> The body structure is actually perfect on this fish. If you look at it, you're saying this is like a near perfect compa. Yeah. When As he swims, he opens up his fins to the fullest. Some will just swim and keep the fins down. He's got the white eyes. This one's a free marking, so there's no marks on the side. Yeah. And the head is actually bigger. You can see it's indented on the sides. That means it's dropped a little bit, so it'll it'll refill in. How much does that thing sell for? You think? PA bought that fish. Yeah. How much you buy that fish for, PA? I'm gonna say a lot. <laughs> <laughs> PA, you bought all the ones with the A's. Yes. You are a bad, bad man, PA. <laughs> Yeah. You got good taste. PA, you own this fish? Yeah, he owns the fish. I'm so jealous. That is such a cool fish. Ah, uh, so they put this little blood parrot in there to cause aggression so that he's meaner. Yeah. They put a fish in here to make the flower horn more aggressive. That's a trait in this fish that people over in China are willing to pay thousands of dollars for. That's why I came to Southeast Asia is because I wanted to see how they do it. I didn't want to be lied to. I didn't want these breeders fake their information that they're giving me. I'd rather than just be honest and open about it and good or bad, that's just like how they breed these fish. You ever seen a dodgeball, bro? <laughs> Why is this guy like got such a big pooch? He's a beer belly, yeah. He says this is the genetic of this fish. This fish was bred to have this big belly. Sounds like people in Wisconsin. It's the same gene, it's, it's shared. Thank you so much for showing us. It's unreal. David, how old are these guys? 41 years old. He's 41? Yeah. What? 53. You're 53? Yeah. yeah. Dude, what are you guys eating over here? You guys look so young. Whatever you guys are doing, it's working because I hope I look like you guys when I'm that age. All right, guys, that does it for this video. I want to thank you guys, PA and Mr. Long, for showing us your farms. This stuff isn't very well documented at all. Not on YouTube, nowhere. I just want to say I really appreciate you guys letting us come into your farms, letting us film, taking the time to do this because I know you don't do it for everybody. Thank you very much. You yeah, and your flower horns are absolutely yeah. amazing. So if you're a retailer or you are a wholesaler over in the United States or really anywhere in the world and you're interested in buying these guys' flower horns, I will put a link in my description below and on your screen to Long Comfa and Tag Team Flower Horns and you can buy their amazing varieties. So this was all Mr. Long's farm pretty much. Now we're gonna go see PA's farm. So if you're interested in seeing more rare flower horns, 
horns, make sure to go watch that video. So we're gonna head over there now. We'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.